Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com with 2018 Panini Diamond Kings Baseball. 12 box, inner case break, number 7 from jazbeeshobbyland.com. The big case is right out there. I don't know why they put 12 boxes in one big 24 thing. They could just separate it out. But anyhow, here's all the people involved in the break right here on the 21st. Pick your team number 7. 2018 Diamond Kings Baseball. TC with double last spot mojo with the Brewers and the Padres. No Rays in this set. I guess if there's any Rays, we'll randomize it. Is that what we say? Yeah, any Rays hits will get randomized to one person at the end of the group. Winner take all on the Rays. We'll probably do a randomizer anyway, just in case I miss any. All right. Now, let's open up that that case first. We're going to we're going to roll the die to see which side we're going to do. So I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see it, but if you look carefully in your screen, it's a, we're right where my sharpie is pointing. That says L, and right next to it says R, left and right. One, two, three for the left side. Four, five, six for the right side. And it's two, so that'll be the left side. There's the L right there for the left side. Let me get comfortable here in the seat again, and then we'll get the break started. Good luck, everybody. Now this break, so get comfortable, folks. This is an hour-long break. Although, compared to recent years of Diamond Kings, I feel like this doesn't, feels a lot faster than an hour. Sorry, hit the mic. No, that sounds terrible on your guys' end. But I feel like, uh, it feels like it flows a lot faster in recent years, so. There they are, it's, there they all are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we'll just start working our way from the top to the bottom. Um, for those of you who don't remember, two autographs or memorabilia cards per box on average. Veteran base will not ship in this. It's just too much of it. But all short prints, variations, inserts, numbered cards, and obviously hits, relics or autos will obviously all ship. Good luck, everybody. Here we go. Scores of the day. Oakland. Chicago White Sox postponed. Rain, I assume. Rockies beat the Mets 6-4 in Colorado. In Minnesota, the Red Sox pounded the Twins 9-2. Yankees with another narrow lead or narrow win in New York over the Mariners 4-3. Brewers pounding on the Cardinals 11 to 3, Cincinnati 6-2 winners in Cincinnati over the Cubs. Nationals 4-2 over the Orioles in the battle for Maryland. Diamondbacks with a 9-3 win over the Pirates. Two games in progress in the bottom of the 7th. The Giants with a narrow 1-nothing lead over the Padres and the Angels in Anaheim with a narrow 4-3 lead in the bottom of the fifth over the Blue Jays. There's your score updates. My picks of the day, terrible the last couple nights. Last couple weeks were really good. Last, last couple days, there are ups and downs, folks. All right, so let's breeze through these. Obviously, these frames will ship. These inserts will ship. Rookie cards will ship. 
So like that Chris Sale will not ship. That's that's the veteran base right there. I think these ones that are flipped around are variations. I'm not sure. I'll set those aside though. I don't know. I'll, I let the shipping team deal with this. <laughs> All right, but let's kind of breeze through this in the interest of time. These Otanis will save, of course. And Will Myers' autograph will go. 14 out of 25 for the Padres. Nice Will Myers going to TC, last spot mojo, one of your last spot mojo teams. Nice. There it is. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Usually it says, like, this kind of threw me off a little bit. Usually it says this autograph is, you know, blah, 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 by Panini, but it doesn't say that on the back. There's Aaron Judge Sepia. Mookie Betts Aurora. Portraits, David Ortiz. Ted Williams, Red Frame. Ahmed Rosario. And Corey Kluber. Dual Relic. For the Tribe. That'll go to Dustin Hughes and the Indians. Mitch Garver, gray frame. And we'll top load all of these before they ship out, of course. Lou Gehrig. Tony Gwynn portraits and Roberto Clemente at the end there. Um, Seth, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a traditional case hit per se. You know, not like in the way that, you know, where a certain product will guarantee a certain insert autograph or something like that. So I don't think there's a case. Is there? I don't think there is. I think there might be one nicer hit, you know, or one bigger, one or two bigger hits than the others. But I don't think there's like a case in the way that we would see in like finest baseball where there's the finest hour autograph, which is one per case. I don't remember Diamond Kings having anything like that. If someone else remembers, let me know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well... What are we? Are, are we almost halfway through the season? We're getting close. All star breaks coming up. That's the symbolic halfway mark of the season. And it's already coming up. What do you think, folks? Like, give me your give me your quick knee jerk opinions. Who is uh, who is for real and who is not for real? Seth is at. It'll be at the Braves Orioles game tomorrow at SunTrust. Pretty lit, he says. That's what the kids say. Um, enjoy SunTrust, Seth. Enjoy SunTrust while it lasts, because I'm sure that the Braves will get another stadium in about 10 or 15 years. That's a good, they have the good 10 or 15 year rotation on new stadiums. Rays can't get a stadium. Braves, they've, they've had like 12 stadiums. There's Ernie Banks. Let's play two. Actually, let's set that there. Those will be sleeved. I think those are variations. And there's Tony Gwynn, Jersey Kings. R.I.P. Tony Gwynn. Not numbered, but it'll still go to the Padres. Another one for Last Spot Mojo, T.C. T.J. saying his season, half over already for the Tulsa Drillers, of course. These guys. Clint Frazier. 
Oh yeah, these will that will be randomized. That's kind of an especial one. Max Scherzer, Ty Cobb. How many games are in the minor league season, TJ? There's Walker Bueller, black white variation. It's my boy Walker Bueller. Get healthy, Walker Bueller. Get healthy, Clayton Kershaw. I think Kershaw's pitching this weekend, maybe. No rehab start. He's just diving right into it. Hopefully, everything's okay. We've got Braden Shipley, signatures for the Diamondbacks. That'll be for Robert Edwards. See, usually it says this autograph is guaranteed by Panini, right? But that Will Myers, which is clearly an autograph, doesn't say that. That's kind of weird. Is it because there's like there's that thing embossed over here? Does it make it different? Maybe it is. That's the recollection collection. Maybe that's maybe this is a buyback auto. Anyhow, it probably is now that I think about it. No, those are both Yankees. Oh, it is a buyback. All right, cool. Oh, I, haven't, I don't think we've seen this one yet. Gallery of Stars, Shohei Otani. All of those Otanis add up, believe it or not. I know I know the Angels aren't cheap in this boombox, but all these little parallels will certainly add up to some good value, even with him being DL'd for a little bit. All right, next box. All right, so, oh, so there's 140 games in the minor league season, and then you start sending guys when rosters expand, right? Oh, that's a good call. Eric Jennings asking, what does it, what year does it say on the bottom of that Will Myers? Oh, it's last year's, 2017. All the other ones say 2018. There you go. Mystery solved. The people were yelling at the video, and they're like, "Hey, it's a buyback, Joe." A buyback. Um, all right, so Eric O saying, I'm thinking the Braves will make the playoffs but then get bounced in the first round. Seth saying Astros are on fire. Braves are doing well. Yankees and Red Sox legit too. Yeah, I think they're I think they're legit. AL East, Yankees, Red Sox, legit. It's just a matter of who's gonna finish first. Um Indians, legit, I would say. Although they're struggling a little bit. Five games ahead of the Tigers. Six games ahead of the Twins, though. I don't know if they're going to catch up. Um, Astros, definitely legit. Okay, Angels. Or, sorry, not Angels. They're, they've slipped a little bit. Um, but the Mariners, they're 46-29. and 29. They've got a .613 winning percentage, which would put them first in any division. Or, I guess, it would put them first in the AL Central. And they're in second place in the AL West. Are the Mariners for real? Three and a half games back. Are they for real? And they lost a couple close ones against the Yankees. Buster Posey, Red Frame, Portraits, Nolan Ryan. Another Shohei Otani, that's a sepia. And there's Todd Helton. Nice. 26 out of 99. Dual Relic and Autograph for the Rocks. That'll be for Brad. Brad and the Rockies. There you go, old school Rocky there. Out of 25, Luis Severino. Goose Goslin. Brad, you said that you said the wife was the Rockies fan, right? 
So there's the out of 25. Artist Proof Luis Severino. Let's sleeve up these Otanis too. All going to Mark and the Angels, including this Portraits one. Slide these over safely here. Another Otani. A lot of Otanis. Japanese Babe Ruth is the nickname on the bottom. And there's Orioles catcher Chance Sisko for the O's, Karen Steele and the O's. Oh, you guys both are. She is just more than you. Got it. Well, that's a good one. Todd Helton. Manny Machado, brown frame, 19 out of 49. Are they going to... Are they going to trade that guy? They got to trade that guy. Oh, I'm check that. Boombox has the Yankees and the Angels. No need to randomize. Let Boombox watching this video going, hey, you don't have to randomize, Joe. Saves me some time at the end of the break. All right, next box. Uh, I did. We did hear about Jameis Winston. Just when I thought that he, he had turned turned a career or turned turned a corner when he became a professional. So much for that. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. I think. I think. I think the Mariners. Could be, could be for reals. Yeah, James Shields has not looked good since leaving KC, right? Um, Eric Jennings was say that, saying that earlier. I think the Braves, I mean, Braves are for real. They got to be. 43-30 and 30 on the season. 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. They got to be for real. And uh, Acuna, when is he coming back? Oh, was that incident? Did that incident happen three years ago? So what's the suspension? Oh, the suspension for it, he just didn't disclose it. Oh, that's what that's what that. I was like watching the news and I was like, not disclosing it. When did it happen? All right, that makes sense. Well, fair enough. Keep your hands to yourself, Jameis. Speaking of the Royals, there's Lorenzo Cain. Dual relic. No idea on Acuna. Hopefully soon. There's Miguel Andujar. 47 out of 99. Nice one for the Yankees. Black, white, gray frame. Mark Glassman. Chris Sale, Clint Frazier, Otani, Chris Bryant. Yeah, it did remind me that the, the Acuna injury did remind me of Harper's injury. We just kind of slipped off that... Uh, Slipped off that first base bag. Those are always very cringy kind of plays where you look at that and you're like, ooh. And you suck air through your teeth and you're like, eee. <laughs> All right, JP Crawford, 193 to 199. For the Phillies, that'll go to Jeffrey. Willie Calhoun, Otani, Sepia, all right, next box we have 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes to go. We're moving along nicely. All right, so Braves are for real. I guess we're, we're, we're acknowledging that. Braves are for real. Nationals for real. They're 40 and 33. They got to be for real. Bryce Harper's struggling mightily, though. I thought the Philadelphia Phillies were for real for a second. But they're only three and a half games back. I guess any one of those three teams could do it. I thought the Mets were for real in the first month of the season. And not for real. I think Cespedes going down, I think, really affected their lineup. Marlins actually playing a lot better than a lot of people thought they would. And then um, the Red Sox are for real. Yeah, we, did, we discussed that when we did the uh, AL East. Um, in the a uh, NL Central, I guess you have to say the Brewers are for real. 44 and 30. They got to be for real. Cubs are for real. Might be Brewers and Cubs going down to the wire. Cardinals are currently five and a half back. And Pittsburgh has really slipped. I, I think they started, they were looking strong. They slipped a little bit. Diamondbacks are for real. They're 41 and 33. They're cruising along nicely. Dodgers getting back to their winning ways. They're two and a half behind the, the uh, Diamondbacks. They caught up 38 and 35. E even with the uh, 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 pitching rotations worth of pitchers on the DL. Dodgers have managed to... Justin Turner kind of coming back has been a big help for them. It's the Splendid Splinter. That guy was for real. Nice red frame. A lot of Otani's popping. I feel like more Otani's than usual popping out of here. Strasburg, original materials. Nice. It's a solid one for Josh Filo and the Nats. Eric goes concerned about, oh, the young kids handling the playoff pressure. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Game use material as well. Um... I, why am I blanking on the manager for the – let's play two. The manager for the Braves. That's where, the, that's where the manager makes his paycheck. You know, if you can keep that team loose, there's Mike Trout, Sepia. David Ortiz, Big Boppy, Artist Proof out of 99. If you keep that team loose – you know, and kind of keep them, I guess, in a sense, young and dumb. You know, too young to realize that they should be feeling pressure, right? One of those situations. If you can get that careful balance right there, that could that could be that could be good for the uh, that could be good for their playoff run. Reese Hoskins. Oh, Brian S Sittner? Not sure if I know how to pronounce that. There's David Dahl. Another autograph for the Rockies. 72 out of 99. Two color, dual relic. And the autograph. So you got some past in Todd Helton and the present in David Dahl. Um, Seth, I, yes, I did watch the, uh, I did watch the NBA draft. I think, I, mean, I guess it went as it was supposed to go. Were there any surprises? I mean, to me, it didn't seem like there were any big stunning moves or anything like that. No Kawhi Leonard trade being, uh being orchestrated on draft night. No draft night monster deals, as far as I know. At least nothing that has been reported yet. Yeah. 
Seth's excited. Oh yeah, you guys got the got him in a trade, right? Yeah, Hawks got Trey Young. And a first round pick. Like in 2020 or something like that. Which is not bad. I feel like the Hawks are not... Are what, Seth? Two or three years? Only two or three years removed from a playoff spot? It's not that long ago that the Hawks were in the playoffs. And people were like, ooh, this could be a new young team, blah, blah, blah. Um... But that's a good, that's a decent, that's a good rebuilding process there. What's up, Joe P? Son, yeah, I, I'm glad, I'm glad the Suns didn't take Luka Doncic. I guess it was, I guess it was eight and all along. But I get nervous about those. About those like um, kind of European guards that are super young, you know. It just takes. I mean, it took Ricky Rubio a little bit of time, and he was hyped too. Remember Ricky Rubio, the Ricky Rubio hype. Took a, took him a minute or two to really get into the full swing of things, and that was only until recently. Uh, twenty five out of twenty five, Luke Weaver autograph going to the X line. Nice Luke Weaver. Clint Frazier, Roberto Clemente. Oh yeah, they did move up too, right? Well, who's the other guy that they got? Well, you know what? Sun's making that move. There's Chuck Klein. Freddie Freeman. Again, hard. Oh yeah, you got Bridges from the Sixers, right? Sixers, I think. So this that's a good move for the Suns because you're because they're saying to Devin Booker, please don't leave. Oh God, don't leave us. Here's a team for you, which I think he should be happy with. He's still pretty young too, you know, and um, and so like. You could, yeah. I think Michael Bridges is small forward, maybe. Maybe he can play a shooting guard. You know, you got Devin Booker at shooting guard. Maybe you have someone else play point, I suppose. And you still have Josh Jackson up front, and and uh, Aiden in the front court. That's not bad. So that's that's not bad at all, and um, and then Joe P, it'll be back to good old good old Lakers Suns rivalry again, and of course the Lakers will do Lakers things, and they'll get Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and LeBron James, you know, and then Suns fans will be pissed because an entire generation of good young players just get stuffed by the Lakers and the Warriors. And there, and there you go. <laughs> Hist bask NBA history right there. Um, so, and Nick er Erhardt saying that Grayson Allen to the Jazz with Donovan Mitchell. So which of last year's rookies, last year's basketball rookies, now I know we typically don't talk different sports during this break, but this break's an hour or so. I'm down talking about other things too. Um, we can't. I can't fill an hour of baseball all the time. But uh, which which of last year's rookies have been helped the most by this year's draft? You get, uh, does, that, does that question make sense? So, for example, does how much does Grayson Allen help Donovan Mitchell? I think obviously the Suns picks will definitely help Josh Jackson from last year. Does Grayson Allen help? There's Ramel Tapia, another Rocky. 
Wow, Rockies with a nice break. Seven out of 49, three autographs for Brad. Team Brad. Nice. There's the babe, Sultan of Swat. Raphael Devers. X line saying Grayson will help immensely. He can trip a lot of guys now that he's a pro. Um Yeah, that's that that is not gonna fly in the NBA. If Grayson Allen tries to pull any of that. Bat Kings, Alex Rodriguez, Rangers edition, one out of forty nine. And that'll go to T C and the Rangers. Ozzy Albius, red frame. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. Shoeless Joe, 5 out of 25. Hack Wilson, artist proof for the Cubs. Um, Seth was asking earlier, any predictions on LeBron? Laker Joe Mojo? I, have, I honestly have no idea. I mean, LA Sports Talk Radio, local Sports Talk Radio, freaking out. And freaking out. You know, it's so, so these talk radio guys love it because so much airtime is being filled. LeBron where? Kawhi what? You know, let's get Ramona Shelburne on the air. You know, let's let us let us let us get let's get all the ESPN guys there. You know, they can fill they can fill all dozens and dozens of segments a day just talking about LeBron and the Lakers and this or that or what there's just it's not really clear what the Lakers can do. I mean, I think it'll it'll start being clear if I think it'll be clear once that first move gets made. Whatever first move they make, I think will start to set the dominoes of where the next moves are going to be made. But right now, it's all speculation. They could trade away all their guys and get Kawhi Leonard and start over. You know, they can they could not they could not get Kawhi and then maybe PG thirteen offset you get. I don't know. Does LeBron even opt out at all? I have no idea. So, I just don't know. I, I have a hard time. Yeah, I agree, X-Line. I have a hard time believing that LeBron actually wants to come out west to the Lakers. Um, the question is, do I want LeBron personally? That's a good question. <laughs> I, if, he, if he wants to come here to, to the Lakers, it's hard to say no. <laughs> You know, and if he wants to come here to LA and say, I want to join the Lakers, I want to bring some guys, I want to build a team here, it's it's difficult to say no. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, w I would take him, especially since it means it'll probably bring um, other players, you know, and then. And then I guess my, my guess would be that LeBron will finish out his career with the Lakers. Gives us, you know, three or four more good years before he's got to decline at some point. That's my big, my hesitation, really. Kyle Farmer, let's see his, the one game the Dodgers beat the Cubs. It was that Kyle Farmer walk off. Um, the age thing really worries me. Because you're just like, well, the other shoe has to drop at some point, right? That dude cannot, like, we saw what happened to Kobe, you know. There's Joe Musgrove. Um, for the, oh, yeah, that's right. He went to Pittsburgh. I was going to say Astros. Out of 99, that goes to uh, Michael Gallucci, Steel Curtain. Um, I don't know. I saw, sorry, I lost my train of thought with that hit. There's Josh Bell. Oh, LeBron's health. That's what I, I guess that's just that's what I'm worried about. Because we saw um, 
we saw, whatchamacallit, Kobe Bryant go through the same thing. He looked healthy. He looked fit. He's a workout machine. You know, so... He's a workout machine. He'll be healthy. He's fit. He he's 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 great. And then all of a sudden, ooh, Achilles thing. Ooh, knee stuff. Ooh, and then next thing you know, the last two years of his career was just kind of injury riddled. Put put together a nice final well, last three years, but finally put together a nice last year of the season where minutes were heavily managed and blah blah blah. And there you have it. That's then that was that for Kobe Bryant's career. So I'm wondering when when is that unless LeBron is a cyborg which he is getting cyborg getting close to Joe Jaspi cyborg status getting up there with Yarmir Yager another one from Michael Gallucci Andrew McCutcheon I like that camo in there um so yeah that's the big concern for a guy that's going to command a zillion dollars per year <laughs> Now maybe that maybe you take that risk because that means getting Paul George, maybe Kawhi Leonard, you know, maybe some other pieces. So maybe you take that risk. You know, Paul George will be playing for a little while, I hope. So we'll see. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's just, this is gonna be a crazy off season because now that the draft is set and no real huge trades were made with picks. It's easy to, to trade away players or trade away. It's easy to trade away picks because they haven't turned into people yet, right? When they turn into people, when you actually do the draft and you pick a person, when they turn into people, it's harder to move those people because now they're humans, you know, with, with, with faces and highlight reels and, and scouting reports. And, you know, you start to get visions of what they could do. Potential gets into the head and... And it's harder to move those guys. You know, fans get attached to the draft picks and everything. It's hard to move those guys. So now that all now all that draft stuff is set, that's where it'll go. Uh, any idea when I'll have more classics in the shop? I have no idea. Probably not anytime soon. Dustin Hughes, with all the business ventures LeBron has, I'm not sure money is the driving factor. Well, title is a driving factor, right? You don't think he hears all the media reports? How many finals he's gone to and how many he's lost? You don't think he hears that? He reads all that. He'll pretend he doesn't care. He kind of doesn't care, but at the same time, he does. I think he's going to stay in the East. I, yeah, I agree with you, Exxon. I think, I think he's going to stay in the East. He wants to win another title or two. And I don't think he wants to do that in the West. But then, so now the question is, X line and everybody. Now, if if we all just for the sake of argument, if we all stipulate, you know, to use a legal term, if we all stipulate that LeBron James will stay in the East, so now where does he go in the East? Dual relic and autograph, Reyes Moronta. I don't even remember this dude. One seventy seven at two ninety nine. It kind of has a Pablo Sandoval build here. There you go, Reyes. That goes to Charles Scrabble, last uh, or not last one, Mojo Oppo Joe Mojo, Bellinger Dodger Joe Mojo, two color dual relic, seventy nine out of ninety nine. Sixers, people keep saying Sixers. X line and Dustin Hughes. I don't know if I believe that. Josh Proust, who's in that area, he's saying he was saying a couple weeks ago. Man, he's a man. Local radio, they're going nuts. They're saying. You know, they're saying LeBron to the Sixers, but do the Sixers actually want him? My my sort of semi spicy take was um was the Heat. But I don't know who they got in the draft, but Boston? I don't know if I want to see him in Boston as a Lakers guy. I think Eric Jennings was saying that earlier too. He's like I may quit basketball for a season. There's Bat Mass and Bumgarner out of 14 out of 99. And there's Perfect Game. See, I don't think... Remember, Kyrie is not is not extended by Boston. If Kyrie... Think about why Kyrie left Cleveland. I think LeBron was a big reason why. If LeBron joins, joins the Celtics, you can bet that Kyrie... 
will probably will probably leave and not extend and so precipit that precipitates a trade or they just I mean he's not gonna let him they're not gonna let him go without a trade but they'll get picks from someone Kyrie wants to go to New York hmm that's interesting I I actually listened to a nice uh, a nice podcast with Kyrie Irving. Uh, I don't know if anybody listens to the Bill Simmons podcast on the on the Ringer Network now. It's on Spotify too. But there was a nice uh, Kyrie Irving, pretty pretty well spoken. I could see him in New York. I could see him surviving in New York. Kyrie to New York. What would they? What would? What would the Knicks send him? Picks. Danny Ainge is savage, though. That guy is a savage. I don't want to. If Danny Ainge picks up, if Danny Ainge called me with a deal, I could automatically assume it's not a deal. That would. That will be good for me. Somehow I'll get fleeced. That guy is a is a mastermind. Yeah, I, I would. I, if Danny Ainge called me and had a deal for Jaspie's Hobbyland, I would hang up the phone. I'd be like, "No, Danny Ainge, I'm not doing business with you. I know what happens to all those other teams left in your wake." It's exactly what I'm talking about. The Nets, Eric Jennings, exactly. Otani Aurora. Clemente, red frame. Roger Maris. Mike Trout. There's Francisco Mejia. Two color dual relic for the tribe that'll go to Dustin Hughes. It's their big uh, catching prospect. For whenever they get rid of Jan Gomes, when Jan Gomes gets too old to catch, Felix Jorge and Paston. I don't know why that was flipped around, but Ichiro and why is this flipped? See, whenever they do that, I'm always thinking, is there a big hit on the other side? I know, I know. Jan Gomes is raking right now, though. He's not going to do that forever. Black and white, Shohei Otani. He's not going to do that forever. Francisco Mejia. He's the guy. Although he's been struggling in the minors. That's why he hasn't been called up yet. Austin Hayes, is he called up? Dual relic and autograph, 271 out of 299. That's for the Orioles, Karen, with the O's. Oh, the Otanis are flying out of here. Cody West, C Dub, is saying you have the fourth best odds to land Machado. Where, where, where would Manny Machado play? I don't think... But does Machado want to play third base? If you convince him to play third base, I think he, I think he was pretty committed to playing shortstop. And I, th I, th I think the, I actually think it's more of the, I think it's more of the, uh, whatchamacallit, it's more of the bullpen, I think, that's been the issue for the Indians this season as to why they haven't been as dominant as opposed to their hitting. 
Braves could be a good location. Yeah, see, I don't think Manny, but yeah, Manny Machado is. It would just be a half year rental. I don't, I don't think he would do that, and and scoot over for Francisco Lindor. He, but he's not going to take his spot. Um, Braves, I think, could be a great location. They've got prospects, you know, and they could use that. They could use that. Uh, use that bat in that lineup. That'd be pretty crazy. More Otani, Sepia, and we've got. Tigers edition of J.D. Martinez, 48 out of 99. J.P. Crawford, gray frame to 99. There's Reyes again. So C-Dub is saying that Phillies actually have the best odds for Machado. And EJ is echoing that the Phillies front office have Baltimore ties. Boom Rex saying that right now the Orioles win more games with their farm system. Is that true? Or is everybody is everybody on that uh, on that lineup under replacement level? Negative one wins above replacement. There is Ivan Rodriguez for the Rangers. Nice. There you go. TC. Pudge. Rangers edition. Nice. There's Longo. And DeRocher. Well, here's the thing. Hayes in the house as well. Um, who do you give up for Manny Machado? Because Seth is saying, all right, well, we got Albius and Ciarte, Freeman, Machado, Acuna, Albius, you know, Swanson. But you can't keep all those guys, right? You guys have, you have to give up some of those guys to get Manny Machado. Who goes? Who do you sacrifice for Manny Machado? Prospects and picks. I don't know. If, I don't know if prospects and picks will. Be. If you called Seth, if you called me, and I'm Peter Angelos, and I pick up the phone and and, and it's like, bring, 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 and it's like, hello, I'm gonna be like, hey, Seth Peacock here, GM. You know, GM of the Atlanta Braves. I'll be like, hi. Hi, Seth Peacock, GM of the Atlanta Braves. How are you? I'm doing great. So, Peter. I'm Peter Angelos. Uh, P Peter, uh, Manny Machado, what do you think? And I'll be like, okay, okay. I mean, we got to move him. And then the Braves, and then, then, and then Seth Peacock goes, I got prospects and picks for you. Now, we... we is that what the Braves have done? I mean, listen, the Bra Braves have got to move. I feel like you can't move Albius or, or Acuna, but that's what that's what they're going to ask, I think. Right? Or maybe some of your top pitching prospects. Maybe maybe they want a Fulton... Fulton... Nev Fulty... Fulton... Fulty. Maybe. Ian Anderson, perhaps. Sean Newcomb. I mean, there's gonna there's gonna be there's gonna have to be names that are given up. There's Ted Williams, a splendid splinter. 
Yeah, that's well. No, the price isn't at last year. Last year they could have asked a lot more. They should have moved him last year. The Orioles should have moved. Should have moved Manny Machado last year. Reese Hoskins, rookie signatures. Rex says, "I feel sorry for any player that has to go to Baltimore." <laughs> It's not a bad place. It's it's not like they're a bad organization or like the stadium is crappy or anything like that. It's a decent place. It's still a good place to go to work. If I'm a young player, I'd be like, man, they are clearing out that team. I'm going to have a chance to play every day in Baltimore. That's what I'd do. I think the I think the owner is a little stubborn. There's Chris Flexen for the Mets. That'll go to TC. You know, he's a little old. I think he wants to kind of see. He doesn't want to deconstruct the entire team. He's getting a little long in the tooth. So I don't know if he wants to go down that route. Bobby Thompson out of 49. Cheated. Stealing, Giants were stealing signs. Everyone knows that. Just like how the ball hit the ground. For the alleged immaculate reception. Everyone knows that too. All right. And everyone knows that we are at the end of the break. We're going to close out with Max Carey. Old Max Carey. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. No randomizers. Nothing. Nothing. That's all I got. A lot of Otanis. No ink, though, on the. Is he? I think he has ink in here. There's Bobby Thompson couple variations here. All of those will be top-loaded before they get sent out. And that is that, folks. We made it. Under 55 minutes. That was uh, Pick Your Team 7. The second half of that master case is right there and is in the store right now on jazbeeshobbyland.com. Check it out, and we'll do some more Diamond Kings and talk and have fun. All that stuff. All that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.